<laughs> okay, all right. So I thought that was fantastic. And you've been videoed. I think it's going to go viral. Thousands, millions of people are going to see that. No, no, what integrity me. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, okay, so this is the, G the, the so in the, in the old old days when we first started talking B collaboration, it's me and Jill, and most of the meetings I talked for the whole two and a half hours, and that's where we got the the Erkan Ali show, and I just said earlier on the Jill Tiny show, and slowly slowly we started to to give the opportunity to collaborators to come present, and that's where we got the know the know and be known people sharing their knowledge and educating us from their experience. And, uh, the, and then the core value, keeping us on track with the values and the culture we're out to create and holding ourselves, but also do it as an inquiry, not as an administration. So if you notice here, Sangeet wasn't telling you what integrity was. We are like, well, what do we think about it? How does it apply? Well, no, no, no. So there's some discovery, there's some inquiry. Now the genius slot was really come about when I started to think about if we hadn't at that time quite articulated Fierce scarcity, competition, love, connection, abundance as major societal paradigms. I'm going to say a bit more about that, right? But what I did kind of had a sense of, how are we going to collaborate if you're operating in your sense of insecurity and lack? How are you going to afford your own self-respect when we're going to work together and vice versa? Like, so if you've got to drag me along because I'm too, you know, let, let's say you're now, you, you're now breaking down the barrier of being public, being on the record, being at risk. Like you said, I've spoken to thousands of people in closed doors on behalf of other organisations. Now I'm speaking on my own behalf. Yeah. In a way, you're finding your voice. In a way, I'd say you're actually starting to articulate your own innate genius. Because you're speaking for you on how you're seeing the world. Right. So there were some fundamental things about, well, if we're going to put all these people in a room and they're not operating from a sense of abundance and love and connection and they're genius, these collaborations aren't going to go well. Because then it all gets very kind of don't nick my stuff, protection, fear, concern, right? So that's where the genius started to creep into our language in B collaboration. Now we could have used other words, right? We could have used flow in your zone, in your, um, you know, zen mode, you know, where you're at your high self. I, I use genius for a very important reason because I felt that within us we feel genius is something that's unattainable, it's out there. So when we think genius, what do you think? You know, these, or, you know, Galileo, and, and then, like, I'm going to walk in a room and call myself genius. It's like, so I had to personally climatise to the language, right? And you know what happened, um, Angie, yeah. right? Um, I was at home cooking, I'd be boiling an egg, and the girls, my daughters would come and go, Dad, you're a genius, you bought an egg. And we started to climatise the language of genius and owning our genius, owning our light within a community where other people are owning their light. Carmel owns her light, Richard owns his light. And then I could go, wow, that Carmel, yeah. I want to, I want to we, we could do something together. And what we find is when people sit in a room like this together, they start to, we don't control it. We don't go, right, Carmel, you, Sengi, three of you get to go, go collaborate. That would be not the thing. But suddenly people go, that's amazing. That's, and they start talking afterwards and they start joining dots and these opportunities start to happen. So. So Resident Genius was kind of my, so I designed the, the Discover Your Genius program, the Be Inspired program, and we started to relate to each other in our genius. We started to make it an everyday conversation within the community. Like no elitism, no exclusivity, but just standing in our own sense of purpose, okay? So, what have we learned? And I wanted to kind of bring something today that was probably different to what we've been doing elsewhere, like in the summer a sum up of what we've learned about genius and why, we, why is it making a difference. So for me, I'm noticing how people are blooming within the community. That is the way they stand, is the way they interact with each other. They're not getting it right, they're not getting it wrong, they're just, they're, none of the we didn't talk about in terms of integrity was being true to yourself. It's like being, actually, this is who I am. You may like some of it, you may not like some of it, you may love bits of it, but I'm true to myself, I'm here in my own sense of purpose, my own sense of existence. 
Now, we said fierce scarcity competition, right? So we're talking about an overarching, massive context in that community. Where do you see fierce scarcity competition when you look at the world? Everywhere. But just let's, yes, okay, I agree. Sorry. But, but let's, let's think about it. Food banks, right? We're, we're, what year is 2019 and people are queuing up because they can't afford to buy food. I mean, even saying that, that feels painful to me. Where do you see scarcity, fear? Local government, main government, Brexit. Even just in work, competition. Yeah, zero contract hours. Yeah. It's competition. Do I keep my job? Or do you keep your job? Keep going. Where else is it? I think in businesses, you know, the front, if, you know, if someone's got a business and another one opens up across the road, they're scared, aren't they? And get a bit, get a bit funny, rather than yeah. collaborate. Does it, does it bring business. the best out of us? Um, is it humanity at its best? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> I'm cacking myself because you're going to nick my business. Yeah, I can't pay for my kids. Right. Or a big supermarket opens up next to little corner shops that's and true. their livelihood's gone. Yeah, sure. Where else do you do it? Have you been pulled by, have you been stopped by the police it's lately? Based in reality, like, you know, when I, before I met Richard, I was that there's no men out there in the world. And then someone said to me, you know, there's three and a half billion. <laughs> just not looking hard enough. <laughs> uh, can I just say, yes, Richard, can, can you come and join us? Because I think you're going to get more value and I think we get you as well. So, you know, it's, it's Thank not you. even that it's real sometimes. It's just our conversation that there's scarcity or that, you know. So life, yeah. li so life experiences also create that fear scarcity. Yeah, like I thought, you know, if, if there's a video of me on YouTube, I'm going to die. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, it's been out there for a while now and I'm not dead Still, not, still alive. No one, <laughs> yeah, as Jill said, I had a concern. If I really started saying the things I was going to say, I'll become attacked, shot even. Yeah. And it has even a, on a simplistic um, basis as well, my friend's daughter, she's 21, and I looked at her the other day and she's got these really big fat lips, very Essex girl, kind of orange face, big fat lips. I'm like, what have you done to your face? She's like, what, what, what? I said, don't mess about with it. You're beautiful. What? Yeah. Everyone else is doing that. Yeah. And there's it's this pressure sad. for her yeah. to fit in with everyone else. I mean, she's yeah. stunning, yeah. but she still feels she has to mess about with her face. And she's only like 20, so 21. 21, yeah. pumping things into her face so that she yeah. looks beautiful. And she's already... Tragic. Yeah, it is. It is. So I want you to consider fierce scarcity competitions like that. It's like gravity. There's a certain amount of it impacting us all the time. Mm and we don't know, we don't know, mm. and it's there. Mm. So just think when someone cuts you up in traffic, are we all like love and grace? Oh no, after you. <laughs> We're not, you, uh, you know, if, if Jill's caught me out a couple of times in the car. She goes, <laughs> she goes calm down, yeah, I know, I know all the arguments. <laughs> he should have pulled out. In fact, I had a, go, a, guy, a lorry driver had a go at me because I stopped to let him out. And Jill's going, I know you're in the right, but he'd let him go. And I'm like, like this. He's making himself more upset. <laughs> the lorry driver doesn't care, just calm down. <laughs> So listen, so if we're going to collaborate, we've got to kind of... So a lot of what I saw in personal development and transformation was how to survive the paradigm, not transform it, really. Even at Landmark, we weren't transforming the paradigm of fierce guessing competition. We were having personal transformations. It was, it, was a different, it was a different thing, right? So we were starting to talk about the... We were talking about the macro and connecting that to the micro, to the personal experience of being a human being, right? So that's where we're coming with this, right? So here are some of the things I've looked at. Now, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to dwell on any of these, but what, you know, if we could look at where the, where, where are the, where's the embryonic stages of fierce scarcity competition, for me, you can see that in education. Yeah, I mean, just getting graded, getting diced and put in different groups. Put in, you are, in effect, in competition with the people in your class mm. for grades, for jobs, for promotions, for head boy, for oh, yeah. teachers. You know, so you can see it there, right? How about in, um, in the money system? I mean, you know, we've got big corporations, private businesses creating money out of nothing and loaning it at interest. And we, when we're all, you know, and, and is there enough money? Have you got enough? Have you got enough? Have you got enough? Have you got more than enough? Well, do you know that there's more money, even though it's fiat, on the planet now than there has been in the history of humanity and yet none of us have got any money? Yeah. So this is a real fierce guessing paradigm, right? How about um, the media? 
And I'm talking mass media, right? I mean, it's shocking some of the things they're saying on media. And, uh, uh, and I think it just propagates the fear and the division and the, you know, the kind of uh, what you could call the Hegelian dialectic, where it's putting one side against the other. It's always that, isn't it? We want one side's opinion and we want an opposite opinion. So it's always splitting us and splitting us and splitting us and dividing us. You know, you go to Liverpool and then there's Everton, you go to Manchester United, there's Manchester City. There's, you know, it's always, there's got to be somebody who's against me because I've got to be against somebody else. Race, colour, culture, caste, we're being divided and divided, right? Okay, how about the state? I don't work within the state, but I'm at the effect of it. I'm at the effect of it. And for me, you get a letter from the government, generally, you open it up, it's like, oh God, what's this going to be? Mm. We don't go, oh, our... Um, <laughs> I just had that thought, you know, you don't look at something that comes from the government and go, oh, wow, what are they going to... Well, it's, no, it's like, oh, my God, it's the government getting in touch. Yeah. Now, they're, they're, they are supposed to be representing us. They're supposed to be our servants, and they, they send us a letter, and we get all kind of, ooh. And I could go on about statism. So, uh, anyway. So, and then the other one, the culture. So that, that in effect, then in, in impacts and influences our culture. How we're going to behave in a society. Now, you've said Liverpool is one of the most amazing places to collaborate and connect. There's a lot of places in England that aren't. A lot of places, and, 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 and uh, it's affecting us. But what I've noticed is actually where we end up is atomised and in survival. We're looking out for ourselves, we've got to look out for ourselves, we're foraging, we're trying to get by, and we're not living in our genius now. One of the things I've learned about survival is it, it lowers your <laughs> IQ puts you into fright or flight. It dumbs you down. Now. Well, that would explain the state of the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because we're in more survival mode than ever, and it seems more dumber now than ever. Right, so do you think that's by accident? It isn't. Most definitely not. Because if me and Richard took over the government next week, Richard, you up for it? I bet we could, we could transform it in a, by the weekend and have a couple of beers along the way. Like that. Me and Jill always said, so Jill, if you and I run this country, it'd be over. Me and Sangeeta. Don't know you two that well, but I bet you I'd rather go with you two than what's in there now. Mm -hmm. Boris Johnson's on the way. <laughs> Do you think he's really worried about you and your life? So we're in survival. Now, the thing with the survival is, is not, it's, this is the thing I want you to get, right? This is what I've learned. It's not about your genius. It's not about you at your best. It's not about you making a difference. It's about you surviving and feeling that you can't make the difference. It leaves you apathetic, it leaves you divided, it leaves you feeling like you can't make the difference. Anyone felt like that in the last 10 years? Five years? Six months? Five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So, so what's, what we noticed early on was the problem what we found is there's lots of great people out there, but through this atomization, this separation, a lot of what we found is a lot of people are coming out of corporate or they're working from home, they spend a lot of time on their own, feeling very vulnerable. I mean, who, are you guys all kind of working that way? Yeah. I don't know if you are or not, but, you know, we've... Yeah, yeah like you, you're, you spend a lot of time... The kind of people we're attracted to be called anyway, seem to be spending a lot of time on their own. Yeah. And they're kind of dispersed and they're atomised and they're just yes. out there. Mm -hmm. And you think, and, I, and I, especially when I met Jill, that's where I was. I said, I wanted a bit... You know, I'd go in and work with businesses I'd be their coach, and what they'd say to me is go, okay, thanks very much, Eric. we've had 18 months, we're all right now, you can go. Oh, okay, then I'll just, just grab my stuff on my way out. And I thought to myself, I behave like these businesses are my business, but I'm just their coach, that's inappropriate. I'm there to coach them and get out, that's what I should be doing. But where are the people I'm going to hang out with? Where I'm going to bat ideas with and talk about things we could do, let's do design programs, let's do courses, let's collaborate, let's do something together beyond just going and getting, making a living and getting some clients. Where are those people? Now, that's the ideas I was pitching Jill when I met her. Like, when are we gonna, where are we going to hang out when we're not working with our clients and delivering value? You know, and that's for me where B Collaboration really started to make a difference. So that, I think, is a, 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 a complete squander of talent. This model, the fierce scarcity competition model, the dissipation, the atomization, the separation, is leaving us unfulfilled, afraid. We're at the effect of fierce scarcity competition. Okay. Anyone heard of Masuro Emoto? 
So Masuro Emoto is a Japanese uh, researcher, yeah, you know, so he, he, put, he put energy into water and, that, and, and bear in mind we're what, 70% water? Those energy, those vibrations give us an experience of life. That's not abundant, is it? When we're in that mode, right? So this fear, this fear scarcity competition is having us, whereas we're not having who we really are. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that's getting us rather than us be actually expressing ourselves, right? So, let's talk about genius. Is genius apologetic? No. There's a very famous story about uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, famous painter, the one that does abstract. <coughs> Picasso. No, is it Picasso? No. Pablo Picasso. Pa in Spain, yes. Yeah. No. Gaudi. Let's go with Picasso. <laughs> I can't, can't, I've gone black. Anyway, so he's sitting in a cafe, and this lady comes up. She goes, "Oh, you're a uh, Picasso." But I don't know if it was Picasso. And he says, "Oh, yes, yes, I am. I am. Uh, uh, the one with the." Uh, Salvador, Salvador, Salvador Dali, right, thank you. <laughs> so so I see the camera, he's walking up to her, she says, uh, oh, you're, you're uh, uh, Dali. She says, oh, yes, I am, yes, I am. She says, would you, would you draw something on this napkin for me? And he says, oh, of course, madam, of course I'll draw it for you. She goes, there you go. She goes, oh, how much do I owe you? Opens up her purse, he goes, $10,000. And she goes, $10,000? He goes, I only took you a minute. He goes, oh, no, 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 madam. Took me a lifetime. Took me a lifetime, right? So to me, We've been at this a lifetime. Mm. Well, you've been it. You, you were born genius. Mm. You were born innate wisdom and unbounded, no boundaries, no division, no scarcity, no fear. But what happened? Mm. When did we start being an apology for who we really want to be? You see, something happened along the way, right? There's a, a really good uh, talk by Sir Ken Robinson about the changing paradigm of education, where he says when you study children at the age of three, four years old, they are off the, rig off the scale for genius. And if you study them year on year in, it doesn't go up, it goes down. Why? Because they got educated. Yeah. Things happen to them, they had experiences. I'm not worthy, I'm worthless, I'm not good enough. Yeah, we know all this stuff, right? But what about if we really made a stand for what is possible for us, and, you know, not like you've got to go anywhere. It's here. There's nowhere to go to get to your genius. It's there, it's been there all along. That's what we're saying. And we're saying this at every BCOM meeting. And I'm gonna to relate to you like a genius, I'm gonna hold you accountable as, as your genius. In love, connection, abundance, not make wrong judgment, blah, 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 right? So, let's think about a world of love, connection, and abundance. You know, we, I wrote an article in the Quest a while back about money. How do you change the monetary system? I said, let people out in traffic. Give way. Let go. Then we change the monetary system. We'll get to that. If I can't let you out in traffic, how are we going to change the monetary system? How are we going to change our political system? So, what have you noticed in this one? Suddenly, three people are coming together saying, you know what? We can do something we've never achieved together before. Might not be what you thought, might not be, you never know. I never thought I'd collaborate with Carmel because she doesn't like someone I'd collaborate with, but she opened her mouth and I go, my God, did you hear what she just said? We hear it all the time. And people within the community hear it all the time. And they go, we can, why don't we? Let's have a go, why don't we explore? And suddenly these things just start coming together. So power of three is a really powerful number. It's a very strong, powerful number. That's why we use the number three. So these are the building blocks, right? Now, as you start to build those threes, guess what? They come together. Suddenly you've got a little huddle. And suddenly we're attracting twos and threes and fours and fives. They're coming together. So we start to attract. And through relationship, community and knowledge share, we start to build... Do you know what? When I look at you, I just see whatever everybody else sees. But when I sit and talk to you, and we talk at this level, I go, you know what? Actually, you could, I could, I could, oh, you know what? You need to talk to, Jill's brilliant at this, by the way. Jill is like always, Richard, you need to go and speak. She kind of pushes it along a little bit, <laughs> don't you? <Try> to. <laughs> but you do, you see, like, you guys really should. 
because you guys are both, yeah, so she sees that big picture, right? Mm. So we orchestrate a little bit, but all the whole, it's happening naturally. Yeah. And suddenly these people are coming in together under a banner called a community. Now really, if you think about it, there's no such thing as a group. And I know this goes contrary to some things you heard. There is no such thing as a group. There's no such thing as a business. There's no such thing as a community. There's no such thing as a country. There's no such thing as a... These are all made up constructs. What there is, is individuals. We are individually genius, like cells in your body. And somehow we get manifested together that creates the outline called Jill Tiny, Richard Hunt. And that's what's happening in BCOP. People are coming together, and then this is the bit I want to really get you under your skin about. Those relationships aren't separate, they become bonds. Where the bonds are more powerful than what pulls us apart, that's where we can collaborate. Because you know what, if you're going to collaborate with me, I promise you I'm going to let you down. At some point, I'll piss you off. I'll trigger you. Correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you think you don't do the same to me? Oh, yeah. Really hard. So what, what, when, when she pisses me off to the point where I'm like, oh, that's it, I've had enough. At no point do I think that's it, it's over. Is she pissing me off or is it all my own stuff, right? We're all old and ugly enough to work that out, right? So Jill is a mirror for me, for all the things that wind me up, for all the things that get in the way of collaborating, for all the things that stop me being who I could be. Mm -hmm. Her commitment to me allows me to become who I can become and vice versa. We've engaged on a journey that we can't undo now. There's no getting back to Stevenage 2012. <laughs> no going back. There's no going back. Yeah? But look at the bonds, look how powerful they are, right? So the bonds, you come in as an outsider, you're sitting here thinking, do I want to get involved with people? Look, it's your choice. No one's going to close you, no one's going to talk you into it. <coughs> but at some point you think, yeah, I'm attracted to that. I don't even know really what it is. But there's something about who I can be within this organisation. In love, connection, abundance. And those bonds start to empower the talent. There's something about the way the bonds start to allow us to let go and open up. A bit like where you dehydrate things. You know when you get a load of rice and you pour water? It's like they just expand. Mm -hmm. They kind of get more connected than separate. Mm -hmm. We're still individuals, but there's a connection. There's a, a lock. And I've seen it, and we've seen it over and over and over again, that that turns into transformation. In other words, the person you came into the community is not the person you thought you were. Don't want to be visible, don't want to be public, don't want to be on the record. Look, that's gone. Like you said, I've got more from... And you haven't really been to a meeting until this one, Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? It's yeah. not what the meetings are, it's what the meetings are. All the, no. yeah, it's being part of the community on every different level. Absolutely, because there's so many ways we communicate in, and connect within the community. So can you see that? Now this is something, going back to what we said, I said about Landmark, I didn't feel that at Landmark. I didn't no. feel my, the bonds I was part of, so I, was, I was representing something, I loved it, I, 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 don't, I cherish it, I wouldn't change a thing. But it didn't give me that, for me. Right, yeah, I, I, I feel that when we get crack, like the Norths coming together again, when we really get going, we, we are, yeah. it's but, the only thing. Yeah. That that as a, in, this is my opinion that what you just what how you've just talked to now that's when we're allowed <laughs> when we're allowed to do that or we, if we just if, that's the only way I can turn it when we're allowed to do that it just explodes and we've had to really push it haven't we um, mm -hmm. at this moment and. It's going to be hard for them to stop us now. Uh, by the way, there's no criticism. I'm just saying that was my experience. I know. Yeah, it's fine. got it, got it. Fine. Good. But, um, but I think that's it, and there is something about having to just um, just trust yourselves. Get yeah. I think uh, like be true to yourself and go for what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah like you, like we trust the people in the community. Do, operate, as long as they operate within the context and the intentions of the vision, the mission, and culture. Listen, what we said to people was just play nice. If you spill something, clean it up, be responsible, and we're instilling that into the community. Because we're talking about human beings here, right? Bear in mind, my last experience there was 15 years ago, so. Anyway, so, the transformation of ourselves and our relationship to others creates amazing bonds.
powerful bonds that we can rely on in collaboration. Because if I'm going to get into something with you, I've got to know that you're going to take me at my best and at my worst. Because my best is amazing. And my worst can be pretty challenging. <laughs> and I imagine it's the same for every one of us. You know, a marriage is a collaboration. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a, it's not a sprint, is it? You know, for those who've been married, or well, you know, it's, it's a challenging situation to be in. So, go back to Musimo, uh, what's his name? Emoto. This is what love looks like, or beautiful things, yeah? You know, so when we, when we are in that vibration and we're in that energy, there's a lot, we, and you here probably know as much about it probably more than I do, but your health, your skin, your sense of purpose, who you're being when you're living, when you're surrounded with the vibration of love, connection, abundance, brings something to you that is not cognitive. You can't always explain it. But what I get when people leave a beak on me is a sense of belonging, a sense of possibility, a sense of opportunity that I've not seen anywhere else. And I, I, I've been in a lot of places. And it's not Jill and I doing it to people, it's us yeah. collectively doing yeah. it, self-organised. Yeah. So, what I want to leave you with this thought, right? So, there's a, there is, there's a certain genius energy when we're in that moment. We've all had it, haven't we? You, know, you kind of go, yes! Like the spark of oh, yeah. moment where you just kind of go, yep, that's bang. And there's no doubt, there's just clarity and focus and then there's action. And I think it gives us to a point where that anything is possible. Anything we want to create is possible. That being that around other people makes a difference to the planet, makes a difference to the money system, makes a difference to how our education is going to go, makes a difference to how we're going to be in perpetual war forever. If we raise this consciousness which is happening, yeah, yeah. then anything, anything, we anything. can, through collaboration, we can make anything important yeah. happen. Mm. So that's my genius slot. I think way ahead of time, to be honest with you. And I uh, just want to leave you one picture. That's me at a wedding. My blue shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Different wedding. So I want to say, uh, any questions on what I just said? Because I went pretty quick. Uh, because I kind of get who's in the room and who I'm talking to. So. I like the shoes. Do with these ones? Yeah, I think you should wear them. They're not a No, I've got a suede pair as well like that. <laughs> Is that the question, Carmel? No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, so that's it. That's level. <laughs> <laughs> I've just worked out where we're at here. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, not, not to um, invalidate anything. I'm clear, like, who I am today mm -hmm. is everything that I've gone through. Yes. Completely. And, um, but for me, I... You know, when I was a teenager, my dad said to me once, who do you think you are, Mahatma Gandhi? Right? And I, and I said to him, no, I'm, I'm Sangeeta. Yeah. And, uh, and it, he wasn't like trying to be bad, he was just trying to, you know, he didn't want me to study law and be a human rights lawyer. He wanted me to be a doctor because that's what, you know, Indian parents want. But, you know, I wasn't either. Um, but it had, it had me think for a long time that something's possible in the world. It's why I did Landmark. It's why I gave up everything in the north of England and moved to London, right? And then, you know, having done that for 25 years, I know I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for that. For me, with all that training and everything that it gave me, it never got me back to that place with my dad where I said, no, I'm saying he's a town. I felt more lost, detached from who I yeah. knew myself to be more and more, which is why, you know, leaving was the perfect thing to do. But I have been searching for a community that brings me back to that place where I don't need to be Martin Luther King, I don't need to be mm. Mahatma Gandhi, I just need to be me mm. and impact the world. Now, I don't want to change the world in the sense of mm. I'm going to change the world, but if I can just impact this city, mm. or, you know, 
Merseyside, then yeah, it's going to impact Lancashire, it's going to impact Yorkshire, it's going to impact Derbyshire, it's going to impact Wales, it's going to spread, and, uh, and and that's it. And it's not, you know, I can't hide anymore. It was easy to hide uh, with the work that I've done, mm. but to do to impact the world, the city, life the way I want to, I can't hide. I've got to come out of myself. I can't pretend I'm not something that I'm not. And I'm not this shy Indian, you know, <laughs> behind the screen human being. I do have to vibrate at that level. Can I ask, uh, I want to add two things to you, right? One is in our, in our vision and mission, it says we're not out to prove a model. So whatever gets us there, you know, I use landmark technology all the time. I love it. It's one of my most prized assets within me. I don't knock it. I love it. I still, we still send people there all the time. Yeah. In fact, quite a lot of our members have, have gone because we've recommended yeah. it, right? Yeah, sure. So there's that. Um, uh, and then uh, we've got one of our collaborators, got numbers Tourette's, who was sitting in, a, in London meeting. He goes, 837. He doesn't really got numbers to it. But anyway, he said 8.37. Like in the middle of the meeting, I go, what, what are you talking about? 8.37. I said, what are you talking about? He says, 8.37 is the square root of 1% of the population is what you need to transform it's England. <laughs> this is how he talks though, right? He goes, 8.37 is 1% of the square root of the UK population. That's how many people you need to transform England. Yeah. And I went, <laughs> come again? No, I did actually. I went, I got it. I got it. 8.37, right? So to us, Sangir. We don't need thousands of Sangir Patels. We don't need thousands of Carmels and Angies and Richards. We need, going back to the, the slide that Jill showed earlier, you know, uh, was it the, the Margaret Mead line? You know, the, the only thing that's ever changed the planet is a committed group of individuals mm -hmm. who come together mm -hmm. to make something happen. Sure. Yeah, you know, and I think that's the opportunity of B Collaboration. It, it, it is a wider community of people that are up to something that want to make a difference and pay their bills and contribute their yeah you know, so it's a bit like going to a picnic where everyone's bringing their best dish yeah. if everyone's bringing their best dish you're not going to go hungry you're going to get what you need because mm. what I've just brought to the table is awesome next time it's you next time it's you next time it's you and we all take a bit you know chicken leg potato salad cheesecake whatever it is and we go away like this when you leave a beacon meeting, you're like, oh, yeah, see, so like, oh, drop that bit. Oh. You've got more than you can apply. And it's all gifted to each other. It's not B collaboration. In fact, we have never, as far as I know, ever told someone they can't present something. We've never had that issue. People present what's here to the community. This is my best stuff. And you know what the caveat is? If I share my best stuff, you better use it. Yeah, whereas in the rest of the world, in fierce guess, if I share my best stuff, you better not nick it. Yeah, that's right. Well, they go, did you use it? Did you get value? Because next week, it's them at the front of the room giving that value. Anyway, so that's, I hope that's given you a, a taste of what's happening within B Collaboration, what we're up to. Um, any other questions about B Call or anything that comes to mind? Because we are ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I could, or Jill, any questions for Jill? Or, are we good? Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias.